हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल फिजियोलॉजी लर्निंग आई एम डॉक्टर राम इन टूडेज डिस्कशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट डिफ्यूजन एंड परफ्यूजन लिमिटेड गैसेस इन टूडेज टॉपिक विल बी डिस्कसिंग अंडर द सब हेडिंग्स दैट इज अ ब्लड गैस बैरियर देन फिक्स लॉ ऑफ डिफ्यूजन देन वील ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड एन इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज ट्रांसिट टाइम फॉलोइंग विच विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट ऑक्सीजन डिफ्यूजन नाइट्रस ऑक्सीड डिफ्यूजन एंड कार्बन मोनोक्साइड डिफ्यूजन लेट्स डाइव इन टू द टॉपिक सो फर्स्ट इफ एनी गैस हैज टू ट्रांसपोर्ट फ्रॉम द एटमोस्फियर इन टू द ब्लड दे हैव टू पास थ्रू वेरियस ब्लड गैस बैरियर इट इज लाइक द लेयर्स विच द ऑक्सीजन हैज टू ट्रावर्स एंड रीच द ब्लड फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट्स टेक ऑक्सीजन ऑक्सीजन फ्रॉम द एटमोस्फियर इज कमिंग इन टू द एलवियोलिक दिस इज द एलवियोलिक and here we have the capillary it has to come through all these layers and finally reach the capillary blood here it has to first cross through the most important layer that is the surfactant layer in functional anatomy we have seen that it is reducing the surface tension then second layer we have the alveolar cells it has to pass through the alveolar cells itself then comes the alveolar basement membrane that is the basement membrane of the alveoli then it has to traverse through the interstitial layer that is the layer that is surrounding the alveoli which is in between the blood vessel and the alveoli finally it has to enter the endothelial basement layer and finally the endothelial cell and it will be reaching the blood so the oxygen has to go through all this pathway every time that it is transported what is the transport mechanism for oxygen as well as carbon dioxide both of them transport are transported in a simple diffusion we will discuss about various transport mechanism in general physiology but here the oxygen and carbon dioxide tra traverse by simple diffusion what is simple diffusion most of us would have learned in the physics that simple diffusion is the diffusion from higher concentration to the lower concentration suppose if there is a concentration of air is more in the alveoli and the concentration in the blood is low it will be transported from the higher concentration to the lower concentration this is the case of oxygen whereas the case of carbon dioxide it is maximally present in the blood and which will be transported to the alveoli and expelled out so this is the case of carbon dioxide both of them are transported by simple diffusion phenomena so this simple diffusion is dependent upon various factors it is given by a law which is called fixed law of diffusion fixed law of diffusion will tell us what are the factors which influences the transport of gases by simple diffusion let's understand the factors one by one first diffusion capacity of the lung that is diffusion capacity of the lung is dependent upon delta p into area of the alveoli then k this k is a constant we will try to understand what is this constant then d which is the thickness of the membrane first coming to delta p delta p means that is the partial pressure difference between the alveoli and the capillary suppose if the partial pressure difference is 10 in one case and 100 in another case that is the difference between the alveolar pressure and the capillary pressure if the partial pressure difference is 10 then only small amount of diffusion can happen obviously then if the difference is more that is one side the concentration is more the other side the concentration is very less then the diffusion will happen much much in greater quantities so it is directly proportional to the partial pressure difference now coming to the area of diffusion this area of diffusion if there is a larger area obviously more and more diffusion can happen but most of the times in a normal lung the diffusion area available is 70 meter square if the area is reduced like in the case of fibrosis what will happen to the diffusion obviously it is going to reduce coming to the third factor which is the diffusion coefficient this diffusion coefficient is a constant and it is variable to depending upon the gas it is entirely dependent upon the property of the gas 
instead of this k i have written s by square root of molecular weight this s is nothing but our solubility so if any substance is more soluble means it can diffuse faster if we have a beaker and we have a membrane if one substance is able to solubilize and enter faster then more and more substance will travel to the other side through diffusion so it is solubility divided by the molecular weight molecular weight is inversely proportional to diffusion meaning if there is a bigger molecule it will take time to diffuse through the membrane let's try to understand this solubility and molecular weight with the help of oxygen and carbon dioxide even though the molecular weight of carbon dioxide is more the carbon dioxide is more soluble than oxygen that's why the carbon dioxide diffusion capacity is around 20 times that of oxygen meaning the carbon dioxide easily diffuses across the membrane that's why in case of fibrosis if i have a five person is having a fibrosed lung in a fibrosed lung the oxygen diffusion is hampered diffusion is hampered and the person will develop can develop hypoxemia that is reduced oxygen level in the blood but even in case of a fibrosed person this has a larger diffusion capacity but because of this property of the carbon dioxide it is able to diffuse and throw out the carbon dioxide to the outside environment so the person does not develop does not develop hypercapnia this is clinically important then coming to the last factor which is d it is the thickness of the respiratory membrane obviously if the thickness is more then diffusion cannot happen so that's why thickness of the respiratory membrane is inversely related to the diffusion capacity so fick's law states that the diffusion capacity of the lung is directly proportional to the partial pressure difference directly proportional to the surface area of the lung then the solubility and it is inversely proportional to the thickness of the membrane and the molecular weight the normal thickness of this respiratory membrane it's usually 0.2 to 0.6 micrometer and this thickness will increase in case of fibrosis of the lung now coming to the important concept that is the transit time what do you understand by transit time it is the time taken by the column of blood to cross the alveoli suppose if we take a column of blood and see how much time it takes to cross the alveoli that is called as transit time suppose this is our alveoli and this is a column of blood which is crossing this alveoli at a given point of time then this given point of time is called as transit time this is usually 0.75 seconds then after this 0.75 seconds only the new blood will enter that is the next column here as shown in the yellow shaded area they that is the next column will come here only after 0.75 seconds so this duration is is called as transit time if the speed of blood flow suppose a person is exercising so what will happen to the speed of blood flow the speed of blood flow is going to increase so what will happen to the transit time if the speed of blood flow is increased then the transit time is going to be reduced the blood will be passing faster that is in the case of any exercise or increased blood flow conditions but normally the column of blood takes almost 0.75 seconds to cross one alveoli now coming to the most important concepts that is the oxygen diffusion in oxygen diffusion suppose for example the alveolar oxygen partial pressure is the po2 in the alveoli it's usually around 100 mm of hg then in the pulmonary artery side or the venous blood from the right atrium it has a partial pressure of 40 mm of hg this will this blood will come to the lung to get oxygenated and then it will exit and go to the left ventricle left atrium and following the left ventricle oxygen has the property of dissolving as well as combining with the hemoglobin so it has two forms one is the dissolved form as well as the combination with hemoglobin out of these two forms 
which will be responsible for the partial pressure yes it is the dissolved form which is responsible for the partial pressure here only this dissolved form is responsible for the partial pressure of oxygen this is one of the most important concept it is not the hemoglobin combined form which is responsible for partial pressure it is only the dissolved form which is responsible for the partial pressure please remember this concept it is very very essential now i have told you that the dissolved form is responsible for the partial pressure so suppose when an oxygen is entering when the oxygen is entering through simple diffusion through our blood gas barrier it will reach the capillary blood and some of them will get combined with the hemoglobin some of them will be in the dissolved form this dissolved form is responsible for the partial pressure whenever more and more dissolved form increases what will happen to the partial pressure in the pulmonary artery side this will also reach 100 so till this 100 mm of hg is reached both sides for example the alveolar side as well as the capillary side the diffusion will happen this equilibrium is called as diffusion equilibrium this diffusion equilibrium is plotted against a graph wherein the transit time is given on the x axis and the alveolar levels are given on the y axis like alveolar levels of oxygen are given on the y axis for example let's take 40 80 and alveolar levels are 100 so what happens is this equilibration happens between the alveolar and capillary and the capillary levels reach the alveolar levels in just 0.25 seconds that is in this period itself it reaches equilibrium so what happens to the column of blood in the remaining 0.5 seconds see transit time all the column has to stay there for 0.75 seconds in this remaining 0.5 seconds no oxygen will be transported to the capillary side because it has already reached the diffusion equilibrium so how will be the graph the normal levels which are coming from the capillary side is not zero for oxygen it is already having 40 mm of hg so our graph will start from here 40 mm of hg and then in 0.25 seconds itself it is reaching the alveolar levels so this is the most important concept why it has to reach the alveolar levels in 0.725 seconds even though the transit time is 0.75 seconds this is like a safety factor how it helps us it helps us suppose you are exercising and the blood has to be oxygenated much faster so this is this period will help me this transit time will shorten in case of exercise even though if it shortens to 1/3 of the time still it will be equilibrated to 100 mm of hg because the time required for equilibration is just 0.25 seconds hope it's clear so let's try to understand with a funny example suppose we all are waiting for the cabs in a line and a cab which has three empty seats are coming and three people are getting into the car in just one second for example it's not possible let's take they are getting into the car in one second but this cab driver has to wait there for three seconds that is his rule so what will happen for the next two seconds even though no passengers are entering he is full so what is the only way to get up more passengers this car has to move then the next car has to come so that he can take more passengers in a similar fashion this blood which is already saturated cannot take more oxygen after that 0.25 seconds so after the 0.75 seconds is completed only when new blood comes that is the next column of blood suppose in this example suppose next column of blood is here so only the next column of blood is perfusing this alveoli then only we can get more people so this oxygen is a type of example of perfusion limited so why this is called perfusion limited gas the answer is very simple because the column of blood which is already there they get equilibrated in a much shorter span of time and we need a new car or a new blood supply to come to that place to pick up more 
oxygen or the customers in case of our uber example so that's why oxygen an example of perfusion limited gas suppose in this example even if i thin out the membrane can it take more oxygen in that 7.5 seconds no because it is already getting saturated in 0.25 seconds even if the membrane is altered still that 100 mm of hg only can be reached so that's why here the limiting factor is perfusion that's why oxygen is an example of perfusion limited gas now coming to the second example nitrous oxide in nitrous oxide the property that we should understand is it does not it does not combine with hemoglobin i told you whenever there is a dissolved form only they will cause the increase in partial pressure in case of nitrogen oxide it has only dissolved form only dissolved form is present so what will happen to the equilibration time if only the gas that is going to dissolve the pressure is going to reach the alveolar levels in a much shorter time so what will happen is whichever gas is coming they are not combining with the hemoglobin so they are present only in the dissolved form so that the alveolar levels are equal to the capillary levels that is the diffusion equilibrium is happening in just 0.1 seconds what is the reason if it is combining with hemoglobin that partial pressure increase will take more time so here it is not combining with hemoglobin so what will happen is the diffusion equilibrium happens much much earlier so in this example the diffusion equilibrium is reached in a much shorter time that is just 0.1 seconds not even 0.5 seconds 0.25 seconds is required for this equilibrium so the diffusion equilibrium that is alveolar levels are reached in 0.1 seconds so if i have to get in more nitrous oxide what is our only option because this blood is going to stay there for 0.75 seconds and there is no space for further equilibration i need a new column of blood yes that's why n2o is also a type of perfusion limited gas here the limiting factor is perfusion limited gas now a question arises is there any gas which is diffusion limited now let's try to understand the third example that is carbon monoxide the carbon monoxide has a special character which we should understand in carbon monoxide it can combine with hemoglobin 250 times faster than oxygen faster than oxygen so what happens here is whichever carbon monoxide is coming to the blood they go and combine with the hemoglobin whenever they are combining hemoglobin combining with the hemoglobin fast do you think the partial pressure will rise partial pressure is due to the dissolved form here as soon as they enter they are going to combine with the hemoglobin it's like somebody we are entering the car and so it is the people are disappearing continuously because they cannot put any weight once they combine with hemoglobin weight i am meaning here the partial pressure there is no dissolved form this dissolved form is not there so if dissolved form is not there do you think the partial pressure will increase no so the partial pressure of carbon monoxide does not increase so even after the 0.75 seconds that is the transit time still it will not attain the alveolar levels so our typical graph will be something like this if you read the books this is the example of carbon monoxide so in this case do i need new circulation to take more carbon monoxide the answer is no because this itself is not completely equilibrated this can take more and more carbon monoxide still still there is so much space left in the car how is it possible because people who are entering they are disappearing by combining with hemoglobin so still the space is available in that 0.75 seconds itself. so more and more can people can be pushed in how can we push more and more people by thinning of this membrane if suppose if there is a mechanism to thin out this blood gas barrier to thin out the blood gas barrier if the blood gas barrier is thinned out then more people can enter so that's why this gas is an example of diffusion limited here the diffusion is limiting factor 
because I don't need a new blood supply to increase the carbon monoxide levels that can be carried out. That is the reason carbon monoxide is called diffusion limited gas. If the membrane is thinned out, then there can be a little increase in the transport, but then also it will not reach the alveolar levels because everything gets combined with the hemoglobin and there is very little increase in the partial pressure in the capillary side. Now coming to the summary of the diffusion and perfusion limited gases. This is the typical diagram given in books wherein along the x axis the transit time is given and along the y axis the gas that is like oxygen, nitrous oxide or the carbon monoxide is given and the alveolar levels are given. So let's try to understand like what is the three graphs represent which one is what. Here we can see a gas that is not having the alveolar levels even at the end of the transit time. What is the example? Yes, the answer is very right. It is carbon monoxide. So this will be our carbon monoxide. This can be a diagrammatic question. Now let's try to understand this blue curve. In this blue curve, it is reaching the diffusion equilibrium that is the alveolar levels in less than 0.25 seconds. So this gas is nothing but our nitrous oxide. Now coming to the another third gas which is starting at a point which is not zero. So it means that the capillary is already having some amount of that gas and finally it is reaching the equilibrium at what levels? It is reaching the equilibrium at 0.25 seconds. This is an example of our oxygen. So this could be a diagrammatic question. So if it is reaching the equilibrium at 0.25 seconds, it is oxygen. Then 0.1 seconds, it is N2O. It is not reaching the equilibrium even at 0.75 seconds. Then it is our carbon monoxide. What is the reason? The oxygen has two forms. That is the dissolved form as well as the hemoglobin combined form. Nitrous oxide has only dissolved form. So that's why it is reaching the equilibrium faster and carbon monoxide it has highest binding capacity to that of the hemoglobin so that there is no increase in partial pressure at all. So that is the reason it is not obtaining the diffusion equilibrium even at the end of the alveoli. Hope it's clear. Then coming to the take home points diffusion capacity of the lung is given by Fick's law of diffusion. Then what is the normal transit time? The normal transit time is 0.75 seconds. Then gases like oxygen, nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide are perfusion limited gases. Then carbon monoxide is a diffusion limited gas. This diffusion limited gas is useful to calculate the diffusion capacity of the lung. So diffusion capacity of the lung is measured by the carbon monoxide. So all these points are very very essential. I hope it's clear. Thank you for listening. In the next video, we will discuss about the transport of oxygen as well as oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. Thank you.